everybody and welcome to the Key Stage 2 Maths lesson. Today you are going to need paper or a whiteboard, a pencil or a whiteboard marker. And you need to make sure that your brain is switched on and you are having lots and lots of fun. It's also important to remember to pause the video to give yourself enough time to answer the questions before the answer is revealed. Let's have a go at our time stable challenge. This is going to take you to a game called Super Maths Bowling. It's a website called Maths Frame. You can pick which game you want to play. I'm going to pick this one. You can decide if you wanted to have one player or two players. I'm going to choose one player today, a longer game or a shorter game. And I'm going to practice the 12 times table. Let's go. 12 times 10, try and see how quickly you can get the answer before it runs out of time. 10 times 12. 5 times 12. Can you beat me? Be a bit quicker. And try and see if you can get it to go in the middle. And then see if you can get a strike. Brilliant. And you, are, you can then repeat the game, you can play it again several times. But I'm going to stop here. So let's go back. So let's focus on today's learning. Slightly different to the one before, so our previous lesson we did halving. This one we're going to do on shapes. So by the end of the lesson you can say that you can sort polygons by side number and identify specific triangles and quadrilaterals. And then we have our remember twos. How are we going to be able to do that? We're going to do it through describing, comparing and sorting the shapes. We are going to name the shapes and we're going to make sure we start with a wider definition and then gradually narrow it down to get to a precise naming. Make sure you have your paper and your whiteboard ready. Let's go. I'm going to show you three shapes. Can you remember the name of these shapes? We have a rectangle, a rhombus, and the very last one, you got it, we have our parallelogram. It's going to be a statement coming up saying shapes A, B and C are all quadrilaterals which have two pairs of parallel lines. Now, do we agree with this statement or disagree and why? So we have to make sure we have our mathematical terminology. Focus here on the word parallel. Can you spot where they need to go? There's one pair of parallel lines, another pair of parallel lines, and then shape C parallelogram, there's one pair of parallel lines too. But actually, each shape will have another pair. These ones are vertically, diagonally, and diagonally too. So yes, we do agree that all three shapes are quadrilaterals with one pair or two pairs of parallel sides. But we can actually narrow that down further, which could be the odd one out. It might be A, because it's the only shape here that has right angles, four right angles. So therefore, this one is the odd one out. It could also be B. Have a think why B might possibly be the odd one out in this list. It might be the odd one out because it's the only shape here with all four sides the same length. If we consider the diagonals of each shape, so where the two meet in the middle, which one would then be the odd one out? Look at the diagonals, what can you see? 
I can say A is the odd one out because their diagonals are the same length. What do you think B might be the odd one out? What can you spot about um, the diagonals in shape B? That's correct. They all meet at right angles. Next one. Describe what you see. Two shapes coming up. You might say they're two triangles, but if you narrow it down further, what can you tell me about each triangle? Because they're definitely not the same triangle. I'm now going to cut this shape in, um, into two parts. What can you see now? I can still see two triangles, but I can now see a quadrilateral too. So this is called a, you got it, trapezium. Let's focus on those three shapes. Equilateral triangle, this one, we've already mentioned this one before, trapezium, and then the very last one, you got that one too, we have our isosceles triangle with two opposite sides the same length. Now what happens if I take my equilateral triangle and my trapezium and I put it together? I actually get another polygon. Can you spot which polygon that might be? Yes, correct. It is a pentagon. But what do we notice about this pentagon? Can you tell me about its angles? Yes, you're correct again. It does have four obtuse angles. Let's remind ourselves about what an obtuse angle is. It's an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And then it has one acute angle, less than 90 degrees. But this particular shape, pentagon, it's an irregular one where the sides are not the same length. But this one, I can also say something else about it. It has a symmetrical line. Let's consider these two statements. Statement one, a quadrilateral can have exactly three right angles. Statement two, it is possible to draw a pentagon that has three right angles and is symmetrical. On your whiteboard, have a go and see if you can prove these statements correct or incorrect. Do you agree with the statements or do you disagree and why? Pause the video, you can have a go first and I'm going to be revealing the answer. So let's take step um, statement one. I'm not agreeing with statement one. Why? Because if I'm trying to draw the shape, I can draw three right angles, but then this one cannot link because otherwise I'm creating another right angle. So if it has three right angles, then the fourth angle must also be a right angle. So this statement would be incorrect. It is possible to draw a pentagon that has three right angles. Let's try and have a go and see what that will look like. There's my three right angles. Now this is a quadrilateral and I want a pentagon. So all I've done is I'm going to take one corner off and then automatically I have two more angles. And therefore I have created another shape that, has, um, that will give me three right angles. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then I have my one here, which would be five. If I turn it, I can also see that this shape is, you got that, symmetrical. It has the axis of symmetry in the middle. Let's consider different shapes. I'm going to show you eight shapes. Have a think about the names of these shapes and how are they similar and how are they different? And we're going to sort them. Thinking about the differences, we're going to come up with two headings that we can use to sort these shapes. You can come up with your own. I'm going to show you one first. The first way I can sort these shapes is I can say that some 
would be regular and some would be irregular. Quickly jot down the letters of the shapes in each box. Here are the answers. So, four shapes would be regular, all the sides the same length, and four shapes won't be. Next one I'm going to choose is I'm going to go down the symmetry road. These ones are symmetrical shapes, these ones are non-symmetrical shapes. Have a look at these shapes. Can you spot which letters would have to go into this box to make them symmetrical? And which ones would have to go into that box to make them non-symmetrical? Jot them down, pause the video. Let's see if you correct. Wow, so many shapes that are actually symmetrical. Can you spot their names as well? And then only this one here, who can remember shape B? You got it, it's a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a non-symmetrical shape. And then the last one, this one has shapes with fewer than five sides. This one shapes with five or more sides. Write down your letters. So here we have all of these shapes would have fewer than five sides. All of these ones would have five or more. So fewer wouldn't be able to be a shape that would have um, five, it needs to be less than five. Now at that stage you might have had a go in trying to create different boxes with different headings and show the properties of each one of those eight shapes. Now thinking about the same eight shapes, or it might be different polygons, which polygon would be able to go in each one of these boxes? Has an obtuse angle, has three sides. Which one would have to go in there? Today we have compared the shapes in many different ways. We've also named the shapes. Some of you had a go at drawing the shapes. So for our next challenge, is I want you to try and see if you can take a piece of paper. I started with a rectangle. There's my rectangle. And then I've taken the rectangle and I have broken it into different shapes. So I've started with a triangle in the middle. Then I created two more triangles. But what I want to show you is what happens if you move the shapes around. You can then create different shapes from the shapes that you've cut out. So if I take this shape for example, have a look at this one. It has a right angle, so it would be a right angled triangle. What happens when I take the two right angled triangles? I can create another triangle and this time this triangle will actually have an obtuse angle too. So I can put this new triangle into the space where it says has an obtuse angle and has three sides. So this grid is for you to try and create different shapes, cut it out and see if you can pick which one is going to go in which box. I'm just going to move that one slightly to the side and then play around with it a little bit. If I move the two together, what shape have I created now? Can I also think about how many lines of symmetry it might have? Does it have any parallel lines? And what type of angles does it have? Does it have an acute angle, a right angle, or an obtuse angle? And can you indicate where those angles will be? And then try and see what happens if you move. Keep moving them around, keep moving them around. What do you see what happens? If you move them around, can you create a different shape? You can tell me what shape I have just created using my two triangles, I've created a parallelogram. So where would the parallelogram go? It's definitely not symmetrical. So the parallelogram does have an obtuse angle, but which other one 
one pair of at least, it must have one, this one has two, doesn't it? So have a think about where these shapes that you created, and all of them started, if I stick that one down, all of them started with a rectangle. Take a square. If you cut the square out, how many different shapes, how many different polygons can you create with that one shape? And if you've created those, it would be fantastic if you can send those pictures to me so that we can add them on our website and have a look and see how many different shapes everybody created. So whatever you have done at home, show me how you started with your original one, how many shapes did you cut out, write the name of the shape on the inside, indicate what type of angle you have in the shape as well. So there would be my acute angle and there would be my obtuse angle, the one in there. Then I have my parallel line, first parallel line there and my other parallel line would be there. And I write the name of the shape on the inside. Same for the triangle. What type of triangle did you create? Did you create an equilateral triangle or a right angle triangle? Thanks so much for joining me today, having a go and naming and describing all of these different shapes. And make sure you keep practicing your maths. We'll see each other very soon. Bye.